let's take a look at the tail of the tape. And the tail of the tape is clear who the big man is. Uh, you get uh, Sergio Martinez, who's going to have a couple of inches in height. He's got a weight advantage uh, of three and three quarter pounds. The only thing he doesn't have is the age advantage, and he's been uh, injured. Cotto is uh, one of the Puerto Rican stars of this Puerto Rican weekend in New York. Also here is uh, Jennifer Lopez. So who you got, Colonel, the Pope or J-Lo? I gotta lean towards the Pope. <laughs> Very early Sunday morning at the Vatican right now, so it's a two to one favorite, you <laughs> think, right? That's it. Who's the one? Me? <laughs> think I got Jayla? All right, so we're set to go here, and the hairs are standing up in the back of my neck, anticipating the WBC Middleweight Championship of the World. And I'm sure for the fighters, their hearts are pounding. Oh, here we go. Martinez decked down in the primary white trunks and. You see Cotto with all the tattoos with the purple and black trunks, a little bit of white trim on his trunks as well. Martinez is southpaw, jabbing with the right hand. See how he starts here. He's got the long shorts on, so you can't see it too well, but he does have uh, knee braces on. On both knees. Cotto draws first, goes to the well and lands some leather. All business, both guys, no messing around here whatsoever. Cotto tries to test his right hand upstairs, blocked by Martinez. Again, Martinez has a considerable advantage in reach. And Martinez was hurt by a left hook. Yeah. And he appears to be wobbling. He is wobbling, Larry. Cotto trying to get in and see if he can finish this thing off early here. He's definitely wobbled by that hook. Another one to the body. And he's down. The champ is down in round one. It's up to five and six and seven. So you were right. That hook hurt him more than I thought. This is exactly what Freddie said. They get on him early and they test his mobility. They test those knees. And he went right at him. And he hit him again with a left hook. So Cotto trying to take this guy out early if he possibly can. Freddie said the fourth round. This is round one still. How about that? The right hand gets through. Is it the 39 years of age? Is it the 14 month layup? He got hit again, oh, he's, and he's, he's staggered. Hurt. He's hurt again, down. and down he goes for the second time. Remember, there's no three knockdown rule. The count is up to a standing eight. He takes the eight count. He 45 seconds left. Can he make it through this round? With 40 seconds, and down he goes again. That's the third knockdown of the round, but as I said, there's no three knockdown rule. No He'll get the eighth again. His legs are totally shot. He's trying to get revived. Down three times in the first round. The crowd absolutely loves it. Still 20 seconds to go. He caught him, put him, put him down again. Left hook again. Martinez right, hanging on for all he's got. Inside of 10 seconds to go in the first round. Nobody would have dreamed this. Look at this, he's all really, his legs are just not there. And the bell ends, the first round, Martinez won't be able to recover. A 10-6 like round, Colonel, in the first round. I haven't seen a three knockdown round like this since Pacquiao fought Marquez the first time and Marquez did recover. But Marquez wasn't 39 years old coming off of operations on his knees and hands and shoulders and 14 months of inactivity. Oh, there it was. This is that hook that you called, and that started it. And there's the second one he goes down. And again, the 
Christini Second wants down. to point out a couple of occasions, just totally off balance. His legs aren't there. He's completely oh. flat-footed, even as he's walking out right now. You oh. So here we go to round number two. Well, I'm, I'm recalling now how he was hurt badly by Chavez, if you recall, in the 12th round, and he fought back valiantly and gamely. Now, he'll do all he can do, but has he got that kind of uh, stamina? Has he got that kind of grip left? He's a hard shot still being landed by Cotto, and he's still very flat-footed is Sergio no Martinez. Marches, no marches. And Cotto is sort of controlling the middle of the ring. Uh, Freddie Rhodes talked a great deal about this fight, about something I've never heard of a trainer talk about, about ring, ring position. Ring generalship. Ring yeah. position, being in the right place in the ring where you ring. can deliver no the marches, punches no you want to, to deliver. Don't get the hands caught up in the ropes. Don't have to slide one way or the other. Be in position. And a very good point. And he's got position. Plants himself right in the center of the ring. Let's Martinez do the circling around. This is round two. Down three times in the first round was Sergio Martinez. Well, can Cotto move up to uh, 160? So far, so good. Just his hands look so much quicker than uh, Sergio right now. Sergio's legs still aren't there. His knees look like almost like an With old man walking around. Really fragile, right, Colonel? His legs look really, really fragile right now. They really do. And that's causing the flat footedness, and that causes uh, a lack of balance. And there he goes again. That's not a knockdown, but again, that's weak knees. He tripped over the outstretched leg. But he's weak in the knees. There's no question about that in my mind with a minute to go here in round two. This is exactly what Freddie and Gavin McMillan said. They're going to test his mobility early. I don't think anyone would have predicted three knockdowns, but they got him on his wheels early, and they got him stumbling. Who knows how long those legs are going to hold up. Now he still looks, what I would say, very loose in the knees right now. And if Freddie wanted a textbook uh, situation for Miguel, he's got it because it is Martinez that is doing all the moving, and Cotto is just kind of just lining himself up for these shots. Right. Don't watch it. Don't watch them. Don't and they are testing the legs early of Martinez. Hard shot again, partially blocked in the glove by Martinez. And ring generalship is all Cotto as we come to just 10 seconds remaining here in the second round. The biggest question coming into the fight was answered immediately, wasn't it? Certainly was, and Cotto wins the second round as well. well. He's supposed to be the bigger man, the bigger puncher, and yet he's moving so much, he hasn't been able to try to impose his natural advantage or the one we thought he had. Another quick left hook by Cotto early on. This is round three. You know it's scheduled for 12. Both fighters have predicted knockouts. Now there's Martinez going with the left hand power shot down the middle, but he didn't quite catch Cotto. He looks to be in a better gear and a better place right now than he has been at any other time during the course of the fight. Trying to get some quick hand movement off, and he comes in and bumps shoulders with Cotto and ties hey, him up. Hey, no punches, no punches. Michael Griffin lets him punch a little bit while they're tied up, but then separates them. Martinez trying to take advantage of the reach, but coming right through it is Miguel Cotto. Cotto has uh, maybe a thumb that caught him in the eye or something there. As his right eye is blinking. And then 40 seconds to go now in round three. Martinez landing a little bit more in this round than he has in the, certainly in the first round and then the second round. Cotto trying to get in position to land something powerful again. Hands down to Martinez, just inviting trouble. Finally a little bounce in the step for, for Martinez in this round. Well, he's having a decent round this round. 
Martinez has an, an unorthodox style, throws punches from unusual angles because he is so athletic. But Cotto has kept him moving, and it's hard to generate anything powerful while you're moving as much as he has been. Cotto moved in, couldn't land anything in that flurry there. And Cotto is being respectful of that fact. He's not uh, getting reckless. Relentless, yes. Reckless, no. But that's uh, vintage Cotto in the early years, relentless. Martinez takes advantage of that long jab of his. Lands a couple on the cheek of Miguel. 20 seconds to go in the round. This is the third round. Cotto had De Martinez down three times in the first. Won the second round. I think Martinez is outboxed him in this round. Closing seconds down to the bell. And there's the bell to end the third round. I thought Martinez came back and won that round myself. Larry, do you agree with me on that one? Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, sir. I like Freddie in the corner. He gives one or two thoughts to his fighter instead of screaming uh, 17 or 18 instructions, which they pay no attention to anything. But uh, Cotto has it in his mind what he has to do here now, not to chase this guy around. Just try to cut him off. This is round four. Colonel Bob Sheridan here, Christina Punch, and of course Larry Merchant with the expert analyst here. Our principals, Miguel Cotto. Maroon colored trunks with black and white on them. And the silver trunks with black trim, Sergio Martinez. Red, of course, around the middle. Well, he's doing what Freddie said. He's trying to cut the ring off instead of following him around. That's the only way he's going to get that left hook off that, that did damage in the first. But that's, I think, why the reason that scored the last round for Martinez because he was able to continue to move around and, and box and Cotto wasn't able to land as many punches. Uh, I'm wondering now whether we're turning conventional wisdom on his head, which would have been that the, the advantage early would have been to Martinez and later to Cotto because of the unknown physical deterioration of Martinez. Okay. But here is Cotto. Oh. Heavy blow landed that time. The left hook, and it kind of gets an adrenaline flow because Martinez says, come on, let's go. Oh, he does that. He delivers the left hook again, the right hand. Just missed that time with it. And Cotto is just out boxing. Just out Martinez boxing there. right now. Yep. Beautiful. Cotto oh. assaults with the left hand again. It shifts Martinez around to his left. But not the kind of power that the ones uh, that landed in the first round. And Martinez does have tremendous power, but it's like if his legs aren't there, which all that power comes from, how effective are those are those power shots going to be on Miguel Cotto? Well, that was a question coming in here, and that's what's going to be answered before this is all over. See, he still, to me, looks wobbly in his knees. As the front feet get tied up, which is not unusual for a southpaw and a right-handed fighter. Cotto coming in, lands the left hook that time with the body. Cotto almost muscled him that time as Sergio had him tied up. Miguel trying to measure him with that left hook again if he possibly can. Cotto is the master of the middle of the ring. He certainly is, and he's the master boxer right now at this point in the fight. Falling short with those left hands, which is the power hand for Martinez. And round four is in the books. That's a Cotto round. Miguel Cotto is out in front in this fight, having knocked Martinez down three times, but unable to finish him in the first round. That kind of set the pace for the, what's going on in two, three, and four. With Martinez winning the third round and Cotto coming back to outbox him in the fourth. This is the early going in round number five. 
What does it say about Martinez stop, stop, stop. that he's not willing to stand in with the smaller guy? Cotto started his professional career after the 2000 Olympics as a junior welterweight, 140 pounds. Martinez has been a 154, 160 pounder most of his career. And yet he is the one moving out of the way of Cotto. Almost as if his fight plan was to box him, use the long reach and try to land that big uh, left hand power shot at some stage. Well, I, I thought, you know, it was just uh, a year ago that Cotto lost to Austin Trout here, another southpaw, but not this kind of a southpaw, different kind. That southpaw also had two healthy games. <laughs> Well, and, and Martinez seems to be uh, pushing his punches a little bit because of his movement. He doesn't have a. But you know, Larry, even at his best with the, with powerful, I've seen him knock guys down, and yet that left hand looks very awkward. It looks like yes. he, like he pushes it all the time. Yet I've seen him knock guys down with that. Well, you know, it's because he's got this kind of improvisational boxing style and unusual. Athleticism uh, that he's been able to hit fighters with punches they haven't seen, but Cotto seems very much uh, uh, wired into what the possibilities are here. I like his composure. 46 seconds to go here in the fifth round. The chance for Cotto goes up. Inside of 20 seconds in the fifth. Martinez continues to reach. Cotto continues to make him miss. And you're right now. Why did he come back out there instead of coming in? Double pumps with the right hand, misses with the left. Cotto lands some solid shots. How you scoring that round, my friend? I gave it to Cotto. All right, so we get ready to go to round number six. Miguel Cotto, and this is Sergio Martinez, the reigning champion, two to one favorite, and he's behind in this fight right now. Miguel up in the toes, bouncing now, as you see. I can be uh, in a Adrenaline rush that uh, he wants to pick up the pace a little bit. See if he can land that big left hook again as he did back in the first round. Freddie Trying calling. To... I'm sorry, Colonel. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, Freddie calling for more combinations, more activity from Miguel in this round. Trying to string some more of the punches together. And he's got to work his way in to do that, and he's trying to do exactly that. Martinez ties him up, as you see. The crowd get kind of excited, but remember, most of the people don't have the same view that you folks that are watching at home have. Watch your legs, man. You know, normally, we've seen Martinez with his hands down around his waist, sort of taunting challenging his opponents but after he caught a couple of those punches in the first round he's got his hands up uh, trying to defend himself but he really has that look of determination trying to land something big here now he's on the inside where he wants to be the lunges with the left hook that time and you would think 
six rounds into a fight that we would have seen something from the champion at a significant shot something that maybe would have rocked Cotto or something we could say that was that shot was effective and I, I can't recall one there has six rounds. there hasn't been one and then the other factor is these legs still they don't look great. It looks very, very well, loose. In, in a close round, who are you going to give it to? The guy running or the guy standing and trying to catch him? Now look at this. The close rounds, uh, Cotto is definitely going to win boxing like this. Wait, stop, stop, stop. Down to 20 seconds. That's going to be the case in this round, too. Miguel parries that one off, tries to get the left through there. To no avail. Works to the inside. Both the left hand and right hand. Started to walk away. He heard the pounding of the hammer. And he, for some reason he must have thought it was a bell and started to walk away. That for Cotto through six. Too much water on those pants. Stop putting so much water on. They're telling Sergio to be first, but uh, can he execute that? That's the big question. Here we go. Second half of the fight. Should it go the distance, that is. This is round seven. Madison Square Garden, New York City. Miguel Cotto with the tattoo, Sergio Martinez, the reigning champ, two to one favorite, down three times in the first round. And Cotto won out of the first six rounds, he's won five of them, plus the three point round he had in the first round. So it's a tough hill to climb for Martinez, and he better start right now. Well, and I think he has the idea from his corner that he's way behind, and that he's going to have to, at some point, Stand and deliver. Look at this. Knockouts after six rounds. Cotto 11 and 7 for Martinez. He has uh, extended the left hand that time and got a piece of uh, Cotto flesh. Nice stiff jab that time. Oh, actually, it was the left hand down the middle, not the jab. This powerful shot. With a left hand lead and cut go to a couple of times. Break, break. No punches. Step back. Koto at this particular point for the past 15, 20 seconds hasn't dominated the boxing. Misses with that wild left hook. Tina's cut him good with that straight left hand down the middle. Glancing blow, that one parried away. Sergio Martinez is trying to force the fight a bit more now. Buckled his knees with the right hand. That doesn't appear to be seriously hurt. Uh, Martinez is off and off balance, and uh, he might get hit and not particularly hurt. But in general, his, his knees just don't look terrific to me. Now he's trying to be himself by lowering his his fist, but Cotto, is, with his quicker hands, has been making him keep his fist up, not in his normal punching position. Notice it's Martinez in the center of the ring now and Cotto moving around on the outside trying to get Martinez to move and try to catch him off balance. It's kind of a shame his knees aren't holding up because you know after the fight Colonel that will be well he wasn't at hundred percent and that was evident from the beginning to let him know. Too much water on those shorts Russ. They're soaking Sergio's shorts and he's dripping as he comes out of the corner. It's creating a lot of water on the ring. Yeah, well, the problem is that, uh, when the water drips out of the shorts of Martinez, it goes on that Takate logo and the other uh, logo that's uh, right above the Takate name. And you can see it. the water stays right there and it is very slippery. And that can cause problems and not only for Cotto, but for the knees of uh, uh, Sergio Martinez as well. Trying to revive the older guy by pouring the water down his trunks. A sure sign that things are not going their way. I've even seen him put ice down the trunks like that, and then the guy's out in the middle of the ring and the cubes are dropping on 
Just ask him for somebody to get hurt. Not the case tonight. Martinez misses with his shots. Trying to move as best he can. Trying to square up a little bit now to deliver something harder. Freddie just told uh, Cotto, stay in command. You're in command, stay there. Left hand lead again by Martinez, who was successful in one occasion in the last round that I can recall. Is the jab now finding a home? Missed with a big shot. Toto caught him with a nice straight right hand of his own. At least it bounced the head back. Body shot back upstairs with a left hook. That was a glancing left hook. That one not planted like the ones back in the first round. Heads must have come together because Martinez indicating. Toto says no, that was a punch. <laughs> But with the shorter guy in the southpaw on the right hand and fight it, I would expect more of the heads clash, and it hasn't been a problem to this point in the fight. Toto staying outside, loads up the left, which doesn't quite catch him. That right knee of Sergio Martinez, he keeps trying to flex it out when he gets a chance, kind of kick it out, shake it out, but uh, it's definitely no power, no stability there, and it's, it's just a shame to see. Right there, gave out on him again. Slipped again. And that's a case again, the third or fourth time in the fight where balance has been a problem for him. Straight right hand, landed by Cotto. Again, Martinez was busy enough, but Cotto won the round, in my opinion. With four rounds to go. Miguel Cotto, who started a house of fire in the first round, knocking Sergio Martinez down three times. Set Sergio, it up. Sergio comes out like he's, all right, I, I know I got to make something happen. Cotto hits him upside the head and uh, takes immediate control back. Left hook, uh, a glancing blow that time. Martinez, you know, Christina, a couple of rounds ago, maybe three rounds ago, you mentioned I haven't seen anything really land flush by Martinez, and nothing is happening. right hand, hand, and that landed square on Martinez. It's one of the best uh, solid punches that Cotto has landed going back to the early stages of this fight. I think it had an effect on uh, Martinez because he just got hit with an uppercut. His coder now senses that he might have him hurt. Sergio hangs on. The hands are starting to slide down just a bit. I'm going to see if Cotto can capitalize on two solid shots that he's landed. Oh, there's another left, right. Landed that right oh, hand yeah. down the middle. That's the one you want to land on the southpaw. Bit of a low blow by Martinez there. But Cotto's landed some heavy shots. That left hook on him. And he may have him again. His legs look really loose in the knees again in a load of time. A minute and a half. The crowd senses Cotto is in total command right here. And let's see if he is. He lands another big left hook. Cotto patient enough. He's not going crazy here. Just trying to line this guy up with some solid shots. Martinez, who, as Larry said, came out with the malice of forethought and hasn't been able to deliver. Is that awkward right hand that he throws, and it was countered by a right hand by Martinez, by uh, Cotto. A nice straight right hand again, and that brought uh, Martinez down to his heels. Martinez now is fighting on instinct. Uh, and Cotto is fighting really smart. He's, Very smart. He's not giving him a chance to land one of those punches that come from who knows where. He's defending himself. He's being on the attack when he sees the opportunity and defending himself. 
between those opportunities. And he should get credit. I mean, I know... Oh, oh straight left hand. Buckle the knees. He's going to call that a knockdown. He said the knee hit the canvas. So he's going to call it a knockdown. It's up to taking the standing eight count anyway. The count is six, seven, and eight. Now, we'll have the advantage of seeing did that knee, but the referee saw that knee touch, and that takes him totally out of the... Uh, uh, the fight. I don't think it touched. Him. Yeah, I don't think it touched either, but uh, we will see in the replay. The referee thought it touched, and, and if he thought it touched, let's see. He got him with a flush shot. Let's see if the knee does touch. Bang! No, nope. it doesn't. The referee, for some reason, thought that knee touched, but it doesn't make any difference. It's still still scored because nobody, in terms of the judges has the advantage of what we have and that's the replay to be 100 percent sure i questioned in the beginning but there's no question now uh, that's another 10-8 round take another look at it and to your point you mentioned koto doing everything right and if this fight ends up going the distance and koto wins this decision Hopefully he gets credit for that, and it's not just, well, you didn't face Sergio at 100%. Well, you know, it's going to be a part of the narrative. Absolutely. Older, injured fighter. He can't come out. The fight is over. We have a new middleweight champion. Miguel Cotto has done it after nine rounds. The former champion cannot continue, and Miguel Cotto is the new WBC middleweight champion of the world. What a performance by Miguel Cotto. Whatever the condition of Martinez, who has been a valiant fighter throughout his career, he was older, he was damaged goods, but Cotto got him in the first round before anybody could see the evidence of that. And went on from there to win which I'm, something which I'm sure will be a famous victory for him, no matter what happens in the rest of his career. Or oh, no matter what is said about the aging champion. A lot of great fighters over the years beat aging champions. Larry Holmes with, with yeah. the Muhammad Ali. Mike Tyson with Larry Holmes. You know the old saying, good big man can beat a good smaller man, but a good older man couldn't beat a great younger smaller man tonight Cotto was as good as he has ever been under the circumstances absolutely he came he saw and he conquered and all of this from the first round causing these knockdowns and that one that wasn't ruled a knockdown so a tremendous victory Christina, did you see over in the corner uh, what the conversation was when they stopped the fight? I didn't notice uh, over there. Or maybe, uh, Larry, did you notice anything that was uh, was going on in the corner just prior to them stopping the fight? Did you notice anything? Well, other than maybe, obviously, his knee's just not giving it a go anymore. He has a cut on his right eye, on the right eye lid that was dripping blood. I don't know if that was an issue. I didn't hear uh, what they said. I just saw him wave the hands. But um, maybe the guys in the corners just figured, look at he's so far behind, he can't outbox this guy. Yeah. At I, this stage of his career, he would have to knock him out, and maybe to avoid pr more damage, they they wanted uh, to stop. Uh, the fight. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit old school. I think you fight to the end. I do too. Here's Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Madison Square Garden, New York, New York, USA, this fight comes to an end. The official time from the timekeeper ringside is six seconds into round number 10. Martinez unable to continue. The winner by TKO victory. And now the new... WBC middleweight champion of the world, Nicaragua's Puerto Rico, Miguel Angel. Well, it's history, Larry. Four divisions, and now five-time champion Miguel Cotto.